A budget is not meant to be binding and restricting. It's meant to bring you freedom. If you're going to enter into a relationship and you have completely different beliefs, you're putting yourself into a very you got to find out early. You have to right have away. these conversations early. Who is going to reconcile accounts? Who is going to pay bills? Who is going to do that? Relationships. You can destroy a relationship because you have never been taught how to manage a relationship. There's the term that opposites attract. Definitely. The benefit of that is that what somebody else from a different perspective might bring to the table. They have the wedding planned and they go through with the big party and then they find out later wasn't what I expected or something did happen. Until you actually deal with yourself and what bothers you, you're going to keep running into the same issue. Are those another new pair of the same black shoes? Really? Really? Don't you have like 10 pairs of those? I can have broken my neck. That's a shoe problem. It's a you, not a me problem. You can help. You can help by not spending any money. Guys, guys, stop arguing. Here. Holy Mother Mary of God. What in the deep blue sea is this nonsense? A tool to save your marriage. Something you should have thought about long before you had me. I don't like this. Son, where on heaven's earth did you hear about this? I like it. Anything to keep your spending under control. We have past due bills, woman. Great. Now, sort out this mess. That's what I do, honey. Guys, you got this. You smart little fart. Well done, Jimmy, well done. Hello, darling, on this episode of The Abundant Life. Here we go. <laughs> Just starts What do we out. got? What's on the... Uh... Starts out sideways. <laughs> well, hello, Miss Angela Todd. Well, hello, uh, Mr. Charles Todd. I guess you're the co-host and I'm Charles T. D. Host. <laughs> Okay. Based, based on what I saw on some of the past podcasts, the new titles. <laughs> yes. Okay, welcome. I am your color commentary. I'm just the peanut gallery to your... It's a good place to be. A mass of wisdom that flows from you like the rivers of living water. Unfortunately, some of it comes from experience and not just the Holy Spirit, so... <laughs> <laughs> a little school of hard knocks. Oh, heard, heard that gosh. one. <laughs> yeah. But you know, that's no, what I think sometimes we've talked about this in the past. That's what gives you a compassion to share with others because you got snot knocked out of you. You don't want to see other people have that happen to them as well too. So today we're talking about money talks that couples need to have. It's something that we really haven't talked a lot about. Um, we're normally talking about managing money and handling money and saving money and giving money and investing money and all these basic principles, if you will, from a biblical perspective perspective. So this is more kind of like on the relationship side. Here we go. Welcome to another episode of marital counseling that always ends up to be some kind of <laughs> new revelation of completely unqualified who we are. to do this. I'm saying, you know, we're qualified <laughs> to teach about money because of everything that we've been through, everything that we've learned from 25 years of experience of actually doing this, raising our child in these principles, seeing our child become a millionaire writing the books to teach other people how to do the things that we apply to our own child. And now here we are talking about, you know, the marriage thing, but, um, you know, in preparation for this, I was thinking about that, you know, your business, like we've had our commercial real estate business going on 26 years. We're constantly growing, changing, Has doing things. Long? 26 years in February coming up. We're in <laughs> December. Yeah. DMG. But anyway, we're constantly <laughs> striving to get better, you know, and sometimes that comes through some challenges. And we've talked about this in the past too, that, you know, it's those challenges that make you stronger. Sometimes it creates the development, not the growth. Growth comes naturally. Development comes by applying pressure like weightlifting or David against Goliath. He became the king because he had to go through that battle. So sometimes those battles can be used in a positive perspective, which they should be all the time to make your business better, to make you a business better man, a better businesswoman, a better client, better for your clients. 
And it's the same thing in a relationship. There's going to be challenges and things that come up that are going to make you a better spouse. We just dealt with one yesterday. We're going to talk about one of the ones we dealt with yesterday. What do you think the biggest challenge in our relationship is? That's a good question. I, I mean, I don't, I don't think I really would pinpoint one. Because there's many. <laughs> <laughs> there's too many. Like, wait, wait a minute. Let me, uh, <laughs> let me make a list here. <laughs> Can we pause for a second? Well, let me just to address that question. Right. Let's just back up a little bit. There's the term that opposites attract. Definitely. And I think that we are definitely that we are opposites on a lot of different things. The benefit of that is that, especially from a business perspective, is that if you're both on the same side and you're both exactly the same and you both agree on everything, it's like you're missing half of the other part of what somebody else from a different perspective might bring to the table. For example, you are a very creative person. I'm a very logical person. So I'm really good with numbers and handling things, looking at that you're very creative, marketing, advertising, that type of thing. So when those two things come together, they're complete different strength and weaknesses. When they come together, it makes a better overall package. So it makes a better overall business. I think it's the same thing in a relationship. You know, you, you have these different things and do we see eye to eye on some things? Yeah. Like spiritual, emotional, some of those things, political things, those are pretty much, and even though political, we may be a little bit different in some ways. Um, the point is, is that that's actually okay, you know, and you have to be able to accept it. I think what through time that you have in marriage, you start to have the ability to overlook those little things that sometimes can divide marriages and money is one of the things that's one of the number one leading causes of divorce. And I feel that we can speak from this because money 20, some 24 years ago, 25, 26 years ago, whenever it was, money was a major factor in our divorce. You know, not just to mention that I was a complete jackass and had my head up. I know, my, by the way, <laughs> you know, let's just of, get to the real point. Other things. But, but because of that, which led to, like we were talking about before, you know, if you just, if you're a jerk, money only amplifies that what's on your heart, which will carry out, which is why when some people win the lottery, they go broke because they have no money management skills or they haven't learned to manage that wealth in the same manner relationships. You can destroy a relationship because you have never been taught how to manage a relationship or at least listening. And there's a lot of this going on in the world right now where people just want to spew out one side and not listen to what the other one is saying. And I would say that for both sides that you have to be, you have to listen and then you have to say, okay, well, this is what I think about this and how do we meet in the middle? And I think that's a key point in a successful relationship, but that also has to be taught at a young age, as well as the money principles. I think just teaching children on how to listen and to voice their own opinion is a whole other issue. Yeah. Well, I think you, in a society today that, you know, we're in this council culture type of thing. So if you don't agree with me 100%, it's like, we just counsel you. We ain't going to listen to you. We ain't going to talk to you. We ain't going to debate with you. And that's a dangerous place to be. I think if that's okay, if it's hate speech, but it's not okay if it's you're expressing an opinion a logical opinion with a logical approach with a solution. I don't think that canceling somebody based on their opinion where they're providing solutions and what they think about something should be canceled. So back to what we we're talking about as far as <laughs> I mean, back I mean, to what we were talking. I like, like to go down a rabbit hole. These are like the little things like at the first relationship, I'll just give an example. I'm not saying these are something that we have a problem with. They're but I'm sure we have things. at one point. It's like the analogy of how you squeeze the toothpaste. And you know, one person squeezes and rolls it. The other person just squeezes it from the top all over the place. The tubes of mass, the other that person sounds likes to like, the, so people have a problem with that. And so they think, okay, so there's division and there's actually a fight over that. Something like that. Or another one's how to put the toilet paper on, how to put the toilet paper. So it rolls out forward or rolls out backwards. You know, those are things that I've, I'm like, I had a girl that had a really big problem with that, with the way the toilet paper is on. It's like, what does it matter? You know, is that, what is do that, you mean you had a girl that had a problem with that? Like, not you, I'm just, <laughs> just, I'm sharing experiences and I just remember what girl is this? I remember her because of that really. So my point is that is that those things can cause division and strife. And it's like, are they really that big of a deal? 
But it but, always uh, rolls forward. It al- but on the it front always end, rolls on the top. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> well, she was right. <laughs> okay. Well, I put mine on forward all the time now, so... You know, out of that, I guess. Okay, good. She taught you something. Well, whatever. And that's the other thing. So different relationships can actually teach you things going into the next one. But make you better. Right. The point is, those things really don't make a big, it's it's not that big a deal is the point. So in learning that those little things are not such a big deal, that prepares you, that develops you, that when other things are maybe bigger, especially in the area of money, Mm -hmm. that you can kind of have that same outlook that, you know what, it's really not that big a deal. And my daughter, I was having a conversation with her the other day about Christmas and we're going down there and is she going here? Are we going there? What are we doing? And our daughter, what would I say? (laughs) My daughter, my daughter. Oh yeah. Our daughter. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) You're having a conversation with Paris and what were you saying? (laughs) We were just talking about something. She's like, well, why don't you just tell mom? I was like, uh, I'm not saying that. She's like, well, why don't you just have like some guts, have some balls, dude. I think what she said. I was like, I'm not even going to go there. Well, what was it? I'm not telling you. What? What and do you mean? Anyway, it's like, it, it wasn't something that I felt was oh, even Okay, so important. stop. Why wouldn't you tell me? Because I'm trying to prove a point that at the end of the day, some of those things aren't even important. What does it really matter? Why do I not just let you have your way in certain circumstances just, to, just to appease? So that's what I've learned through this. It's like... Okay, yeah, it really doesn't matter to me how we squeeze the toothpaste. So it really doesn't matter when we get down the road 25 years. This thing really isn't that big a deal either. So I'll just like, whatever she wants to do, it doesn't matter. You know, I don't know. I'm not, I didn't ask her. I'm not even going to say anything about her. You want to talk about it. You can talk about it. My point is these little things don't matter. And a lot of times you can come overcome things by just a very basic solution. Like, I don't like the way that you splash water all over the place. So I just make sure we always have two sinks. It's an easy solution, right? Absolutely. If you don't like the way that you squeeze the toothpaste, have two tubes of toothpaste. You know, there's simple solutions to these type of things. And you say, well, maybe that's not, maybe I don't like the way that person does a sink either, but we can't have two, two sinks because we can't afford a sink or whatever. Then you have to work through those things. What I'm saying is that there can be some very basic solutions to things, especially moving forward that you can implement that you don't have to even deal with those things. There's some pretty funny memes as you were talking. There's one where there's just a woman's crap all over the bathroom. And the caption says, chicks be like, put the bathroom toilet seat down. (laughs) Meanwhile, they've got (laughs) like a disaster everywhere. (laughs) And they're complaining about the toilet seat (laughs) not being down. (laughs) We'll show that meme, but it just reminds me of that. Like everyone has their own hot sausage party going on. And what I mean by that is... You got your, you, you, everyone's got their own suitcase of yeah. stuff and yeah. how you go through the suitcase is to each his own. And what yeah. you're willing to deal with in that suitcase is where your threshold is at. And is there a solution for it? Like mm-hmm. you said, is there a solution to get a second sink and to have someone maintain their peace and to be who they are? And the key in that, all of this, in my opinion, is loving someone for who they are and not trying to change them or seeing them differently and how you want to see them and letting that play out. I think, you know, you brought up a good point there. It's like everybody's got their own suitcase. So let's just say you're in this relationship and you get down there a little bit and you don't like a couple things in the suitcase. So you're like, well, you know what? It's not me. It's not you. It's not you. How's that going? (laughs) (laughs) What's mine is mine and what's yours is mine. No, not that one. That's yours. It's the, it's not it's, you, it's, it's me. the one, yeah, it's not you, I, it's me. you know what? I just don't think this is going to work out. It's not you. It's me. It's that whole thing where it's really saying, yeah, you know, I have a problem with you and I don't want to do this anymore. Well, what it really is, it's a projection. So my problem with you is my internal problem. Correct. Right? Because what causes fights and so, quarrels among you is not the desires that burn within you. It's basically a lie. And you're basically telling them what you're saying is completely the opposite of what it is. But my point is, is that... <laughs> They have this suitcase that you don't like, so you're going to break up with them. And then I was talking to this new chick, and you know what? Her suitcase, she squeezes the toothpaste the same way I do, and she rolls the toilet paper the same way. Oh, see you later, going on to this new one. But all of a sudden, as I get to know her, it's like there's these other things in her suitcase. Like, are you even kidding me? She's like, she wears her blouses buttoned the opposite way, <laughs> or whatever it is. You know, it's like, what the heck? Point is that. She gonna have some stuff in her suitcase. This person didn't have, but everybody's gonna have something in the suitcase that your suitcases aren't gonna line up. So just deal with the suitcase. Well, and my 
thought to that is that until you actually deal with yourself and what bothers you, you're going to keep running into the same issue. How do you deal with yourself? You learn how to figure it out in life. And how do you do that? You pray, you know, first thing, go to church, you know, get some word in you, change your mind. Like we were talking about in our last episode, changing your mind, which will change your life, changing how you see things, learning how to love people for who they are. How do you do that? Sometimes it is through only experience that you can actually figure out how to move on to the next one. But how can you avoid a whole bunch of heartache? Okay. So I like what you said, this like, Dealing with yourself, getting some word in you, understanding and knowing that God is love, right? That's an important thing. And that the Father loves you for who you are. He created you, so He loves you. So one of the things that I've uh, learned is that, you know, before we can love, we have to learn that we're loved. You know, it's, Definitely. we've talked about before about being able to pour into somebody else's cup, like from a spiritual perspective, you gotta be full yourself. Right. If you're empty, you're bankrupt. You ain't got nothing to give. Right. So you have to be full as well too. So same thing before you can love, you have to know that you're loved and be comfortable with yourself so that you can then pour out love to somebody else. It's good. Yeah. So let's get into some of more of the basics of, you know, talking about money. Well, we want to talk about really some things that you should do before you even get married, the talks. And then once you're in the marriage, cause we're going to be, you know, people are listening from all different sets. They're not married yet. They might not even be dating. Maybe they're dating. Maybe they're thinking about getting married. Maybe some people are married. Some people are far in their marriage and they all like are having questions about money. How do I handle it with them? How do I do that? We're been married for 15 years and we got money problems. And how do we talk about this? And this once again, comes from us from experience because we never talked about money at all before we got married. Nothing. There's warning signs. We're just like, there is. <laughs> spin, 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 spin. Never talked about it. So that's one of my first points is to talk about what's your beliefs about money? You know, what do you believe? That's a good one. What, what do you believe? Right. You know, do you think, and let's just take it from a completely worldly perspective. You know, do you think that it's good for people to be rich? Do you think it's not good for people to be rich? I mean, cause it seems like, you know, when you see stuff like nowadays, sometimes in press, it's like they try to make rich people to be bad. Like they're greedy and let's tax the rich and let's do all this type of stuff. So there's this uh, wrong mindset. I think that rich people are bad. So maybe people who aren't even spiritual think, you know, no, I don't want to have money. It's bad. All, all bad people are greedy and they, are just, they're just not good. How do you find that? And they've been conformed to the world to think that, right. but from a spiritual perspective, maybe you're, you know, you're a Christian or you're a Muslim or you're Buddhist or whatever it is that maybe you could have Christians that have completely different views on money. Very common, really common. And some people think that, Oh, I need to, in order to be humble, that I need to just have just enough to get by. And I need to not have any, big house or nice cars or any money or anything like that. Or then others are on the side that God wants me to be rich. Jesus became poor so that I become rich. I should live in abundance. And then you, so you have these different camps of doing that. So I think, um, you know, figuring out where those mindsets are at are important because if you're completely different places, then you need to figure out, can these two come to a medium, a happy medium where they can agree on things. Can they have that debate? Can they have that discussion so that, why do you think this way? Oh, I think this way because of that. And maybe, you know, through those discussions, you see, start to see, okay, I never thought of it that way. And that's something that I try to be um, very open-minded with, um, with people who I know are from a different political background than me, or have different political parties. Um, even people who are not how do I say this? Right. P people who are, don't have the same beliefs about men and women. I've had those conversations with people. I mean, when we were in Laguna beach, 80% of our neighbors around us were gay and we hung out with those people. We got, so we got along with those people. Yeah. And did we agree with their, did they agree with our sexual behaviors or appetites? Did we agree with them or understand? No, but it didn't cause a problem for us not to be able to Nor any of their politics. And, and hang out. Yeah. And the politics are completely different too, but we're able to have great relationships with those people. Some of the best people in the world. So my point is that you can still have, you know, relationships with people when that's not the point or when those things don't line up, 
when it's in a marriage relationship though, I think it's a little bit different. Obviously, like if <laughs> from a sexual perspective, you don't see, you don't understand. Well, that's gonna, what causes a lot of divorce. It, it ain't gonna work. Right? All of a sudden the woman's gay and the man's gay and then there's a divorce, you know, just watch Two and a Half Men, Alan and Judith. <laughs> okay. <laughs> And all the problems he had. So go now, anyway. watch Two and a Half Men. Shut this off. If you're going to learn, go watch Two and a Half Men. You can learn a lot from uh, satire. Anyway, back to my train of thought here. So there, you're going to have to understand the other person's belief, and you're going to have to talk about it. And you're either going to have to come to um, some agreement on that, some common grounds, in order to, I think, to be able to move forward. And if you, if you don't do that, then you need to keep working on it. If you really want to be at this person, the, those are something that you're really going to have to work on to align those beliefs. And that might not be something that just happens through one conversation. That may be something that's a process. You know, hey, you come to church to me, hear this, or listen to this guy, what he has to say. Okay, you listen to this guy, well, this is where I've got this from. You know, whatever that process may be just to see. But if you're going to enter into a relationship and you have completely different beliefs on money, you're going to, you're putting yourself into a very you got to find out early you have to right have away. these conversations early and but being able to listen and to give and share your point without feeling judged or condemned for doing that and you have to know these things early and you can tell a lot by when you first meet somebody how they spend their money what kind of a person they are and you have to make a decision early on and if people are engaged like even right now and are well, you know, and they're having second thoughts or, you know, they have the wedding planned and they go through with the big party and then they find out later, you know, wasn't what I expected or something did happen. You have to be okay with not going through with something that's big and planned and because it's, you're talking about the rest of your life. You know, it's okay to cancel something because something doesn't feel right. It's okay to put a pause and say, hey, let's separate and let's figure this out. It's okay to not move forward with something that could potentially end up completely destroying your life. And sometimes that's not your bag. That's not your bag, someone else's issue that could happen later on down the road. And you have to be sensitive to the leading of like the Holy Spirit or just knowing like if your gut tells you something, you gotta act on it. And that's hard for some people because there's a lot of fear in letting other people down. And we can go into that whole other mess of, you know, what people think about you. And, you know, it goes back to knowing who you are in Christ, knowing that God loves you and then walking in that love when you're full, because then it will spill over into other things. But Okay. So that's some very good pre-wedding advice you just gave him. Yeah. Back to the money. Back to the money. <laughs> so, but when you were talking about that, that made me think about something about knowing the other person's financial situation. Cause you're talking about knowing what is going on in their life. And then maybe like all of a sudden, like, uh Oh, it's like, I didn't really know this. Let me throw the brakes on this thing here. You know, let me try to get this figured out rather than just, okay, well, we'll get this figured out on the other side after the honeymoon, <laughs> you know, where it could actually could get, you're going to be thinking about it might blow the honeymoon up. Um, so the, the next point that I want to bring up is knowing the financial situation of the other person. So right. we talked about kind of knowing their beliefs. The next would be knowing their financial situation. And once again, this is going to be something I think that's important to do before you get married. And once again, we didn't do either one of these before we got married. We did this after we actually got married, got divorced, and then got some help. Remember? We went to that, that chick that helped us out, like a oh, Christian yeah. counselor or whatever. We did she, the she, mirroring at, at Yeah, she event. gave us some tools, basically. Right. Okay, when, when the crap hits the fan, I want you to do this. And that's kind of what I got, what she taught us. Is she gave us some tools to be able to deal with our issues on our own. It wasn't like we had to keep going back and going back and going back. So I'm, I have my different thoughts on counseling and therapists and all that. I'm not going to go into that now. It's a whole different subject. Do you have a lot of debt? Do you have student loan debt? Do you, you know, do you believe in using credit cards? Do you believe in living debt free? Do you, you know, those are the, that's the things I'm talking about. What's the situation? How much debt, you know, if you're both just out of college or maybe neither one of you ever got gone to college, you know, did you start a business? Is your business debt free? Did you go to school and now you're a doctor, but you have $2 million in debt and you're paying 90% of your student loans out of that. So you only what have 10% like? yeah. cash flow and you're completely strapped and you know, 
what, what, where are you at, man? Who is it? Is it Patrick Ben David that took a list of questions and when he sat down with his future wife, he asked her like, I don't know, a myriad of drilling her all these questions and I guess she checked all the boxes and then he was like, okay, this is going to work. I don't know. That's good though. I mean, <laughs> if you really want to take it from a, that, that sounds that's like, an extreme, but I like it. Well, that sounds like a, like a very logical way of doing it. It's like a business interview, right. you know, you're interviewing an employee for a position and you're asking the questions to see if they're going to fit the position and you know, in some way, yeah, it's probably not a bad thing. You just have to come up with a way I think to be able to deliver that from a compassionate perspective, but it needs to be that. Well, okay. Well, what are our beliefs on debt? What are we going to do? Okay. You have debt. I don't have debt. How are we going to take care of that debt? Well, I don't, I'm just going to, I don't want to have debt forever. So why not just leverage everything for the rest of our life? Well, no, that's not the way I believe. I only believe that if we have debt, it should be debt that we're le we're leveraging to do something from a different perspective through velocity banking, or we're amortizing different types of loans to get rid of that thing or whatever that may be. Well, and another key be. is sweet, sweet lips. You know, honey, not using vinegar. That's yeah, Proverbs says that sweet, le sweet lips increases learning. Yes. Which basically means, you know, taught from a sensitive perspective or from a sensitive place out of love and not from a condemning or whatever. So, right. but the whole point is that, you know, you need to know where that person's at, what you're dealing with and how are you going to handle it moving forward? And if there's, some major differences, then once again, maybe that's going to take some, okay, do you know that, you know, it's not really good to have this much debt or this other person, maybe they're leveraging debt for investments. This is why I have this debt. Maybe that person doesn't have it. And I'm working these two debts to trace, to chase arbitrage in order to earn more money. I'm taking, I'm borrowing from this guy and I'm giving it to this guy and this guy is giving me back and I'm giving this guy back and I'm in the middle making money and people don't understand that sometimes. And that's maybe why this person has debt and the other person has debt. So you have to come through and have those conversations. It's a lot, but <laughs> and that's, you can make it work. That's maybe you know, a little more complex, but just knowing the basics, like what are your beliefs on money? Okay. Well, how are you basically handling your money and what do you, how do you plan on, you know, doing, how do you plan on manage it moving forward? What's your, what's your objective? Well, and I would say this for, even for couples that are already married and find out later, oh, what the heck, and you know, there's hope. There is hope of coming into agreement, praying for the other person. I know some couples that one gets saved and the other one doesn't, and the other one refuses to go to church. And so there's been, you know, division on the guy just, just refuses until like the very last episode where he's on the deathbed and says, I'm sorry, I was wrong. <laughs> and then, you know, I pray for salvation. Um, but you gotta be able, you gotta be willing to stick it through and to pray for the other person and to see them how you want it to work out. Because there's always, there's always a mediation. There's always some middle ground and you just have to find that middle ground and it takes work. And it's not always easy. So, I mean, even for us, I mean, we were like, and then it was like, oh, wow. What do we do with this mess? I mean, there was a lot to sort through. Even when we were divorced, there was a lot to sort through. Well, bankruptcy is like a financial bomb. So when a bomb goes off, there's a lot of mess to clean up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we've talked about, you know, things that to do before talking about the beliefs talking about the situation. Now let's get into maybe people who are already in the situation. <laughs> they, they married and they've never haven't had those talks. And so now what do I do? Right. You know, cause you brought that up. Okay. People are probably in there. That's when I think you've got to get to some of the basics like planning, budgeting, um, tracking some of the, the basic principles of handling money so that you can get things on track. And a lot of times, you know, when we've done like 10 week financial courses or I'm trying to help somebody out personally with something, you know, you bring up the word budget and it's like, oh, you know, the budget. Oh, and what I always tell people is that a budget is not meant to be binding and restricting. It's meant to, to bring you freedom. And so people think, oh my gosh, I'm going to be on a budget and I can't do this and I can't do that. Where it's really like, no, you're allocating where the money's going to go. And when you know where the money's going to go and you know, at the end of the month, 
where you're going to be before you even start when you're at the first of the month. It's very freeing. So it eliminates the stress of knowing what's going to happen because that's usually where fear comes in is what if, you know, what if this happens? What if that happens? What if that? And it's like you're trying to make all these speculations up in your mind. And most of the time, a lot of those things don't even happen or they're not even really a variable. And so you're just wasting your time worrying in fear when a budget from a financial perspective will eliminate that. I always like to ask people, what conversations are you having in your mind? Sometimes I find myself arguing when I don't, when it hasn't, there's nothing. It's just my own mind oh, arguing yeah. with the situation and I have to go, whoa, because so, so what, are, what are you doing? meditating point. on a bad expectation of something happening or have to argue my point where I could but see look, it differently. It takes just as much energy you, to you see it differently. You, you, uh, that, the key word that I was trying to get to there, see. So what are you doing in that situation? You're playing a mental movie with your imagination and you're seeing this bad thing happening. So what are you doing? You're meditating on that. The Bible says, to call those things that be not as though they are. You're not just using your mouth doing that. You're actually using the power of your imagination to create that thing. Which is so And that's that's a whole crazy. nother different thing that we could talk about, the power of the imagination. I mean, Andrew Walmark has a really good book on that called just that, The Power of Imagination. And that's what the whole Tower of Babel is about, was that these people imagined that they could build a tower to heaven. <laughs> And they were doing it they and they believed it. that they could and God had to come down and give them all these different languages <laughs> to try to get them off track it's like, because they were playing it in the mind. They were like, Hey man, if I could just see myself walking up there, if I could just see myself, all I got to do is just build me a tower to get there. And they started doing it. So the point is this, like you said, you can either play that movie in your mind for that argument that defeat, whatever it may be, or you can play that positive thing. And you know, when we're just going through um, this lawsuit, we're being sued for something in our business that I caught myself doing the same thing, like seeing myself on the stand defending my point. Do I want to get on the stand? No. No. So I it's had frivolous. To, I had to catch, I had to catch myself and right. go, "What are you doing? Stop it!" Right. This is not. And go back to then using my mouth because Proverbs eighteen and twenty one, I think it is, says a death and life are in the power of the yes. tongue. So what I start doing, anytime that I get into that where my mind's going the wrong place, I start to use my mouth. Start to okay. use that mouth because it's like James talked about, your mouth is like the rudder on the boat. So if your tongue is speaking words that are taking you to the land of negativity and you don't wanna to go to the land of negativity, change the rudder and it will redirect the boat to the land of prosperity. Right. But how do you do that? with your tongue, just like it also compares, compares the boat, it compares the horse, the, the, uh, what's the thing called in a horse, a bridle. It's the bridle and the horse's mouth. What do you do when you, when you pull on the reins? It's just a little you change the, You change the bridle. So like you pull it this way and that changes the bridle. Well, the horse goes that way. Right. You pull it this way. And I'm, I might be wrong because I don't ride a horse very much. But <laughs> For all those the whole thing, yeah. horse if, people, if you're, we're, we're horse, sorry. Put on, put on the comments there how it actually works, but, the truth of the matter is that when you change the reins, it changes the direction. Right. We can agree on that. It's the same way with your mouth. You can change the direction by starting to change your mouth, starting to speak that life, starting to speak that prosperity. Start, I, I will lend and not borrow. That God is my, protect, my protector. He's my refuge. He is my strength. Our so you're, when, you're having, yes. when you start having those thoughts of negativity or going through that, use your mouth. And I think one of the first exercises would be Throughout the day, just do a check on what you're thinking. Just check yourself. What is it? Check yourself before you wreck checky, yourself. Checky, checky, checky. Yeah, that's basically what you do. You know, <laughs> you're going to wreck your own ass if you keep <laughs> going check down yourself. that road. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a good one. But it's crazy sometimes because you think, yeah, you know, I'm so positive all the time. But then I'm like... Well, what, what? And it pops up and there's that scripture that says every thought, take every thought into the captivity, de captivity of Christ, yeah. every thought, because we live in the world. Just open up your phone. What, what's captivity? 
captivity is like, seize it immediately. Yeah, like put it. I, th I think when I hear that Stick word, it in the bad vault, put it in jail. Yeah, like burn. Like, like how do you say? Like put it in the incinerator. <laughs> so that's the thing. You got you to take that thought and basically put it in jail. Yeah. And then think on that good thought. And this is what I find. I was like, it's a process. I don't really. I don't watch the. News. I don't watch any news that's like CNBC, NBC, Fox. I don't watch any of that stuff because I think both ways have an agenda and both ways are getting paid from advertisers or whatever. There's an agenda. And even watching some of the Christian news that I know, they, they put it out in a form where it's a little more watered down, I guess. I don't know, but it's still bad news. Like 90% of what they're reporting on is still the same stuff they're doing there. They're just not doing it from like a political agenda. They're <laughs> just actually praying for people. So, so it's the same thing. So this is <laughs> my like, point. like, okay, let's pray. I don't, I don't really watch that stuff. Like what I do is I have a news channel. That's a Christian news channel that I would go and watch like once a week or once every two weeks or even once a month. And what I find is that it's pretty much the same thing. It doesn't change a whole lot. It's still, it's the border. It's the, this conspiracy it's this thing going on with this political person it's like the same stuff like the point that I want to make is that what I found is that the more that I watch that type of stuff the more that I let those stuff of the world the more I start to play negative mental movies it's when, true. when I don't watch that stuff I, I don't have to deal with those negative movies anymore because there's like all this strife and all this hatred and all this division so then I start to put that strife and division into play in my own situations in my life. So for example, going back to lawsuit, you know, if I'm meditating on love and God loves me and he is love and greater is he is in me and he's in the world and as he is, so I'm in the world, I meditate on that type of stuff. Then it's like when I'm comfortable in my love walk, when I'm comfortable in my faith, it's like, then I can play a different movie regarding the lawsuit than I would if I was listening to strife and quarrels and all the other stuff. Yeah, because <laughs> you're not meditating on injustice. And when you meditate on injustice, injustice will give birth. So back to what we're talking about, budgeting, tracking, I don't know. that type of stuff. We're trying to help people who are already married, <laughs> right. who are having issues, but that's just free credit because the, you know, we're always trying to get that spiritual part of it. Cause that's what's really people need just to hear differently is you're going to have to put some things in place that are some, some basics as far as handling your money so that you can get on the same page. And like we're, what we're talking about before is, you know, there's going to be different strengths and weaknesses within relationships. So an important factor of doing this is also who's going to handle what, right? You know? And so once you come up with these things, okay, you're going to do this, I'm going to do this. And then moving forward, like who is going to reconcile accounts? Who's going to pay bills? Who is going to do that? Assign duties if you don't already know it. Right. And for us, it's like, we're so far down the road in our business relationships and our marriage together. It's like when stuff comes in, it's like, we don't even have to, are you going to take care of that? Are you going to do that? It's like, we know like email comes in, like we have a joint mailbox from like info for one of our companies. We also have like connect from our ministry or whatever. It's a joint thing that comes in. We also have our individual things, but when the joint one comes in, I don't have to respond. Are you going to do this? <laughs> I already know. I know what's my, responsibility my responsibility my duty without even asking you because right. we know that but if you're not to that point you have to you have to put those you into place you have to yeah. figure it out and that's the whole thing is like you know we talked about figuring out before you get married well if you're already in the marriage that's my whole point is that you have to figure some stuff out now too right. so assign the responsibilities put some budgets some planning types of things that are going to help you just very basic things i'm not going to go into the details of all those other things but my point is that get to some basics and identify some responsibility and who's going to handle what. What do you think is the one tool, just the one tool that could have really helped us early in our relationship with money? What's the one tool? You mean, yeah. what do you mean, think? mean the one thing or the one tool? Are you talking about like a software, an app, or when you say tool? Both. One, the one thing and the one tool. What's like the one, what's like the one key component. I've talked about this before. If you were going to talk from like a, from a spiritual perspective, from a oh, worldly, an emotional, from a mind, from a mindset, from a spiritual set, then I always say third John two. Love and I wish above all things that you prosper, be in health, even as your soul prospers, because it means that God wants you to prosper. He wants you to be in health and he wants your soul prospering. So 
there's there's three different things going on there. You gotta be healthy, period. And you have, so you have to understand that God wants you to be healthy and you have to understand the things that go along with that, that he wants you to prosper, but he wants your soul to prosper. What's your soul to prosper? Your soul is your mind, your emotions, your free will. So the only way that you get your soul to prosper is to let your spirit man minister to your soul, have others ministering to your soul. Right now we're ministering to people's souls. When we are sharing the word, when we're sharing the Bible, when we're sharing biblical principles on how to have, have any money, we are ministering to people's souls because it's affecting their mind. And so the Bible says that do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. What is the renewing of your mind? Getting biblical insight on what God wants to do in your life and your money. So that's a kind of a long way to ask that. The, the first thing is be rooted and grounded in knowing that God wants you to prosper. He wants you healthy and he wants your soul to prosper. And you have to do something in order for your soul to prosper. The second, the, the, like the financial tool or the logical thing, whatever I would, I would say like just the basics, have a budget. Have a budget. I still use a budget today. And I listen to wealthy people sometimes like, I don't need a budget. It's like, I don't have to do anything, the money. And I understand that. I understand it's like, yeah, when you, when you don't have to plan like where your money is going, but I guarantee you those people that are wealthy like that, most likely they have a company or they sit on a board or they're some way involved in money and they're involved with investments that they're very wealthy like that. So what, what are they getting? They're getting information probably from their wealth manager on the, the way they're their uh, investments are performing. They're probably getting even information if they're not actively working in their businesses anymore. They're getting P and L's from their employees or their Just accounting or whatever. And loss, right? Profit and loss. So what are they doing? They're they're looking at okay, how did how did the company perform this quarter? How did it do last year compared to this? Whatever. They're they're analyzing the numbers to try to make decisions on how to move forward. So. In essence, that's kind of a way of budgeting. Okay, how did the numbers go? How that is somewhat of that. Whether they're doing it or someone else is doing you're, you're it. Budgeting, my, budgeting. My you're, you're budgeting. My point is you're you're budgeting. budgeting. You're budgeting in some perspective, right. whether or not people want to admit it or not. I really use like a blended budget for kind of like our personal and some of our basic business stuff because I use it for tracking. So what's the best tracking tool then for you? Is it QuickBooks? Is it Excel? Or what's like the best that, that works for you? I use a combination of both. I use QuickBooks, I use Excel, then I use reports from accountants and reports from wealth managers. So I combined all those things really. But for me, just personally, when I use QuickBooks and Excel. QuickBooks, and Excel. I use that from a tracking perspective, it's just like I was trying to make a decision yesterday on to use this new, uh, new tool, this new device to handle something. And so I was really was playing with our budget in order to, to see how that would calculate. And by doing that, it's taken me two days, but I finally figured out, you know, this thing's not gonna really work the way that I thought it would. But if I didn't have that budget and able to play with the budget and able to play with this other tool that this bank sent me over, I wouldn't have been able to come to that decision. If I were just went off of the uh, advice that I had for some other people, then I probably would have made the wrong decision. But that's a that's a really big point that I always say, like, you know, when somebody gives their testimony to you or you hear their testimony, it's not a blueprint to your life. Right. That's you, you don't yeah, go and copy the blueprint. Like if I say, hey, I got out of debt this way and we did this with our marriage, and you just, you don't say, okay, let me write down every single thing that Angela and Charles right. did or whoever you it was and let me let own. me follow it. You, you have to make it your own. Yeah. So I did the same thing. I had a consultation with a person on giving me the information for this, and she said, I really don't feel like I gave anything, but she really did give me one good thing that I really got. And even though I didn't end up using it, I learned a lot about it that I didn't know at all. And right. now I can help other people in that area because now I know about it. If I wouldn't have went through that, I wouldn't have known it. So to right. me, it was like, it worked out. And that wasn't really after I had the consultation with her, I found out I wasn't, it wasn't even about for me. It was about me doing something for her. <laughs> I was told to do that we did. And so anyway, sometimes you know how things are going to work out right. and you need to personalize everything. So when you get information from somebody, you need to personalize that for yourself. And it's the same thing. We can give information to people on this and some basics on how to handle the finances in their marriage, but they still are going to have to personalize it. Well, they're going to have to do it. You know, you can't just think I'm going to sit on the couch and wish it. <laughs> yeah. Well, anything's going to take effort. Yeah. It's, you know, you know when you believe right, you will act right. A lot of times people say, oh, I wish I had, 
you know, big house and I wish I had more money and I wish I had this and I wish I had that. Let me tell you what, when you start to get those things, it takes a lot to take care of them. <laughs> so, Seriously. Just the management of, I mean, you could tell a lot by a person by their car or even uh, their phone. If I see someone with a phone that has a million cracks and is just broken to pieces and they're still <laughs> on their phone, that tells me a lot about that person. <laughs> or if I see, and this is what bugs the heck out of me, their inbox Brutal. and they have like, 10,000 emails. <laughs> I'm always like, nah, because I'm always, sh 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 you know, just whipping through things. But if that's how they want to live their lives, but that says a lot about a person. I can't imagine having, uh, you know, seeing, seeing the person who's wanting these things coming against those people and the people who are actually living that life and how tidy and organized and um, methodical their lives are. I mean, I know there's some exceptions to the role of, you know, sloppy Joes, but overall, I would say if your car is a mess and there's crap everywhere, even if you have children, you can have your children pick up their mess. It's just a, there's just an orderly fashion of doing things. I mean, I'm visual, like you were saying before. I mean, yeah, I could squeeze the toothpaste all over, but when I'm done, I can clean up. <laughs> it's all about how you finish. Well, that leads us into our next topic. <laughs> Giving. Giving. Here we go. The Bible says, he who's faithful with little will be faithful with much. Right. So it's like if you're not able to, to manage your one car, and you say, I wish I had 15 cars. Yeah, or car. coming against someone how, who has a Lamborghini. How, or, how are you going to take care of 15 cars when you can't even manage one? Yeah. So, the whole giving thing is people say, well, when my ship comes in, when I make my money, I'll start giving. It's like, if you're not giving on the hundred bucks you're making, if you don't give, let's just talk about a tithe. Let's just be very logical here. Okay. <laughs> Legalistic, whatever, however you want to put it. 10% of the tithe on $10 is a dollar, right? If you can't give a dollar, then when you make a hundred, you won't be able to give 10. When you make a thousand, you won't be able to give a hundred. When you make 10,000, you won't be able to give a thousand. It's just the way that it is. And people say that they will, they won't because everything is always relative. And when, so when you're talking about comparing yourself to others and like people say, well, the rich, they should pay more in taxes. They already are, <laughs> you know, right. they're, they're paying their fair share. However it may be, and everything okay. is relative or say, oh, that guy I heard something about this, how, Elon Musk gave 150 billion to something and he, people were criticizing saying that was cheap of him. I was like, you, you don't even have 150 million, so you couldn't even give if you did. But my, my, my guess is those aren't even, the people who are criticizing don't even give either. Cause like what you said, right. that one of the things, the coral of the fights among you are the things that burn within you or whatever. It's like, so my point is that that was like, it's all relative. Right. You know, I said, well, he bought, you know, Twitter for what was it, 42, 43 billion or whatever. It's like, oh, he's got, you know, 200 and something billion. It's changing all the time or whatever. It's like, no big deal. Yeah, it is. It's relative. The amount that you're spending is relative. The amount that you're giving is relative to your income, is relative to everything that you have. It's, it's, it's congruent. And what I've learned is as you increase more and more and more, the Bible says, I think it's Proverbs 115, 14, said that the Lord will increase you more and more, this is the King James version, more and more you and your children. Amen. So there's constant increase. So as we've experienced that constant increase, there's things that you have to continue to do that you did at the, at the starting point back here. And if you weren't doing it back there, you're probably not gonna be, do, be able to do it up here. That's my whole point. So that's your whole thing is like manage the thing. So that was a lot to lead into giving, but Giving is something you're going to have to talk about, know. you know, what about, you know, where do you want to give? Where do I want to give? And you can have that on you have the front end on or, where to give. or you can have it. Even we've had sometimes, sometimes maybe I've given money to someone. We had this happen to a female and I didn't say anything with you because most of the time we like on the same page and then it's like stuff's all over the place. So I just like gave and you're like, you should have talked to me and I agreed. And so now we came through that. So that was something that we were able to talk about. And so then I just, um, gave to another female here just last week. And so I came to you and said, Hey, this is what I heard. You know, you okay. Yeah, this is what I heard. So I actually, I didn't tell you this, but I gave the amount that you said to give, not what I was going to give. Okay, good. I did what you said with us. When we first started giving, we didn't really have 
like a lot of conversation of where are we going to give because we're already kind of in agreement with that and where we were, we were giving to where we were being fed and we're still do that today we give to nine different ministries because that's where we're constantly daily getting fed 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 and putting back into our own ministry as well too so what we used to do is we used to pray about it okay we're okay we want to give to this person or we want to give to this ministry we want to give to this thing how much do we give you go pray about it and then I pray about it, we'll come back. So what we used to do is write on a post-it note. This is what I think. We compare post-it notes, remember? Mm -hmm. And how many times were those things exactly? Exactly. And if they weren't, then what did we do? We had a discussion. Right. Okay, you say this, that, okay, how about this? Meet in the middle, okay, great. Right. We give that much. Then we got to the point where it's like, we don't even have to do post-it notes anymore because <laughs> it's like, so just like with this, what happened with this lady, hey, I you know, was praying about this, Lord told me to give some money and this is what he told me to do, how to handle this relationship. You pray about it. You came back and said, yeah, okay, yeah, this amount, okay, yeah. So just did the amount. So you can get to a place where you're developed enough that you don't even have to have a discussion about tweaking the amount or whatever, <laughs> you know? You can just kind of work through that in your mind. Because you've worked through it so many times and there's been this development of getting to that point. But if you're not there, like where we're at, then go back to, like I say, pray about it. Right. You know? And then if, you, if you're not... If maybe you're, you don't have a relationship, you're not religious in that aspect or whatever it may be, then have a conversation about it right. and figure it out right. and get on the same page before you do it so that you don't do it and the other person's pissed off about it or whatever it may be. And then it causes the one thing you're trying to do, try to give to try to be good, ends up causing... Blowing up. Yeah, causes the problem between you. So giving is a very important thing. You know, this person might believe, well, I think that we should give to save a dog foundation this person thinks well i should give to my local church or whatever you're gonna have to figure some things out through <laughs> right. some discussion communicating sweet lips just always do the loving thing you're doing the right thing when you're doing the loving thing okay here's another one for these are these are for the married people do i have joint accounts do we have separate <laughs> accounts do we have blended accounts and that's a preference i think i mean the Bible says that when, when you come together, you become one flesh, <laughs> you know, one flesh. So do you need to have separate accounts if you're one, one person? I could go on about. So, I mean, we, we could get really spiritual about it and we could get really logical about it. And I mean, we have. Just get logical about we it. We have two banks, two major banks that we deal with. We have business accounts, personal accounts, ministry accounts, credit cards to all those accounts and these separate banks because one's a local bank, one's a uh, national bank, I guess. We have investment accounts, we have alternatives, we have stuff all over the place, is my point. So to me, it's like, I got enough to manage without. Everything that I have is joint with you, but you do have some personal uh, business accounts, personal checking accounts, personal credit. I don't really know what you have because it's not, not something that is concerning of mine, but I say this from the point is that I don't really have like a desire to have separate stuff. You want to have those type of stuff? You have separate and, stuff. And that's okay. The only thing I have I'm trying to think of, the only separate thing I have is cash in a gun safe. <laughs> but that's not like my idea. That's what I use to bless people and give people and presents and all that. So it's a separate thing, but it is separate. It's like you don't have control of it. You don't even know how much is in there. So that's kind of my thing. So. I, Unless I, I open the I, safe. I have friends <laughs> who are married and have completely separate stuff. They don't even have joint stuff. So what is my recommendation? Figure it out. <laughs> figure, figure, Whatever figure out, works, figure out right? Whatever works. Yeah, figure out your own. I, I think that there needs to be, if you're married and you're a Christian, I really think that there needs to be some joint, a majority of jointness going on. Yes, but I also think each person needs to have their independence. Okay, so that's where I'm going. There needs to be that bond because it's a spiritual thing. Of so, course, so, that's the nucleus. So, so that bond needs to be the majority in your finances as well too. But I also believe that there really needs to be some separate freedom. And so with guys, we buy big stuff. Cars, boats, houses, airplanes. True. Women, it's like... Hair, eyelashes, nails, massage, facial, yeah, that kind of stuff. And it seems like, didn't you just get your hair done? Didn't you just get, you know? It's like, it's like, 
It, yeah, I did. It, it, it never like it's just a reoccurring cycle. But it's like it done again. I just don't understand. I like so this is what I've learned. It's like <laughs> this is what I've learned. What have you learned, honey? Just let it go. <laughs> just let it go. So what we did is that that was one of us. I was like, really, hair costs five hundred dollars. Get your hair done. It's like really, you just did that. So in order to eliminate that. Because it just doesn't make sense to a guy to do that. And you could say the same thing. Why don't you just go buy a new Lamborghini again? Did, you got three Lamborghinis this year. Did you really need to buy three Lamborghinis? It's like, well, I could justify it. It's like, I'm just moving assets around, you know? But it's, my point is that this is important to this person. This is important to that person. And those freedoms are important. So we have a Cybertruck on order. We just, after four and a half years, four, four, hey, four years and one month. Hey. Four years and one month, our numbers came up and we're one of the found foundation, foundation orders for the first thousand or whatever. So anyway, I was reading about other people who got that and this guy got a foundation series order. He got the email saying, hey, you are one of 1,000 to get this. And what the guy said is that if I bought that truck, my wife would divorce me. And I thought, you poor sucker. <laughs> <laughs> And then he's joking, maybe, I don't know, there's got to be some truth behind right. that. Like maybe he is going to buy it, but he's going to take some heat from it. Right. Whatever. And I thought, man, that really would blow because I, sometimes I talk to you about car parties, sometimes I don't. Sometimes you don't even know. It's like, hey, I got a car coming today on the transport. What? Yeah, really? What is it? You know, it's not like, you didn't tell me. It's like, what is it? What color? It's like, I'm not going to tell you until it shows up and it backs out of the transporter. It's part of the fun. Because I always know it's going to always be great. <laughs> <laughs> Said all that because I think that that freedom is very important. So that's why you have like this money that comes out of our company and you put into your accounts and do that. I think it's very important. And it's still like yesterday I was going through that whole process of moving this money around and doing this stuff and I'm seeing how I can do that. So I came and I asked you, hey, do you still need to take that money or whatever to do what you're doing with this thing? And I felt the fire start to burn my feet. <laughs> and I knew right then, you know, I kind of talked a little bit. I was like, what did I do? I just walked away. <laughs> I just left it. So that number didn't come out. It wasn't moved to my budget. That number stayed because I learned. So it's like one of those things. And I have another friend who's a financial advisor and his wife actually scheduled a meeting to come into his office during his work time to discuss her personal salary that she would get every month that would go into her personal account so she could spend this money no matter how she's up she's stays at home they're having babies they're doing all this type of stuff she wanted her own money i think it's important yeah. and maybe as couples i love that she made an appointment and went into his office and said business where's my salary <laughs> and that is so great but again you know i like to even it's not just for other things but i like to go out and Buy something nice for you, you know? And if I can't do that because it's allocated to other things and I have to draw from something else, I don't like to do that sometimes. Yeah. I like to be able to have the freedom to make my own choices. That's my whole point. Right. You need to have, even though you're bound in this one flesh commitment under God, and you have all these joint counts, that personalization, that freedom is important. That's my whole point. Right. So and you might say, well, we don't have enough money. We're just trying to figure out how to just pay our bills right now. We don't even have enough. There's start everything small. You know, it's like I always say yeah. to people, you know, start, if you say you don't have enough money to give or whatever, whatever you have, just take something out, take a dime, take a penny out and save it, take a penny out and invest it, take a penny out and give it, start small. So the same thing, take a penny out for each other so that each person can go ahead and have something. It's about putting principles in place right. in the That's small right. yeah. so like that, that you establish that mindset so that you can, as you increase more and more, you still establish those principles. Mm -hmm. And so, and maybe at some points it's like, okay, you know what? We're not going to take of this for personal because we're trying to, to maximize this cash flow to do something together that we're really, maybe just like you want to contribute to that. Maybe that's a season when you're doing that. But then at some point, okay, we accomplished that goal. That was great. Okay, now let's go back to, let's take that, what we're putting in together and let's redistribute that personally into our own accounts that we can have some of that freedom to do that. Something that I've learned over the years, like you were saying, if you're gonna go and buy 20 Lamborghinis and a thousand Corvettes and Cybertrucks and Bentleys and whatever. I like number 20, that's good. Yeah. I'm gonna put that on my vision board. <laughs>
<laughs> 20 Lamborghinis. Is that, I just, I just, there's just some things I just don't care. And it's. Well, and that's, I think the best thing. And that leads into my very last point, how to handle disagreements. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and that was one of the things is that sometimes you just got to not care. The Bible says to cast all cast your, your cares care. on him because he cares for you. Right. So what happens when you carry care, when you carry care, you're going to worry. And then you're going to start playing those mental movies that we talked about. In your mind that aren't and good. then you're going to have those things. So the, the number one leading cause of major diseases, symptom in people's body and death is stress. It's, and where's the stress is psychosomatic, meaning that people make up these deadly diseases and which lead to death because of what they're thinking. It's in their mind. So, so if you can eliminate caring, you don't have stress. Right. That's the whole thing about Matthew six says, you know, don't worry about what you're going to wear, what you're going to eat, you know, any thing Do the birds do it Do the birds. Do they, you know, they need their, heap, heap even up the lilies of the of field. Stuff. They neither toil nor, you know, reap and it's like grass. Not even Solomon. Grass like, doesn't grass. worry. It's one of the lilies. And what does the lily do? Just grows. Yep. <laughs> it just grows just, and just trust blossoms. God. Yeah. Just trust God. So we're you know we're not designed to care. So that's my whole point. How do you handle disagreements? And that's what well, I just want to make it really simple. Sometimes you just gotta not care. And that's do what I that's and that's what I did. Thing. That's what I did yesterday. You know what? I was thinking in my mind, I was like, okay, I can tell this is getting ready to go real sideways and I just don't even care. No, <laughs> it's like that amount of money doesn't even, I was just trying to, I'm, I was thinking logical. I'm doing all these numbers and I'm trying to move this stuff. I'm doing, what if I do this? What if I do that? And then I came to talk to you logical. I was like, that was not a logical conversation to have. <laughs> so what I do is like, I don't care. I just walked away. So sometimes we have to really think about is it the way that the, t the toothpaste is squeezed is the way the toilet paper is it really that important? Sometimes you got to say, you know what? I don't care. And you just walk away. Sometimes that is the best way to handle a disagreement. And you say, okay, well, there's going to be some things that are bigger than that, where you just can't say, okay, I'm just going to walk away because it's not going to solve itself. Well, and that's when you're going to have to go back to what we were talking about. Some of these other things, you got to have conversation. You know, you got to talk about it. Okay. And, and going back to our consulting or consulting visits with the counselor. She taught us how to do mirroring say, so <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you don't even know how to do it. I do, I do. Wait, wait, just give me a second. So it makes you feel this way. When I say this, can you tell me a little bit more about how that makes you feel? Is that how it works? Oh my God. <laughs> it, well, I hear you. I'm not laughing at you. I'm laughing with you. But I feel like when you're saying this, this way, but I want to be sensitive to how you feel too. So like when you came into the kitchen and I know that you're doing such an amazing job controlling that portion of our finances and you're trying to come up with alternative ways to make something happen. But what I hear is, I'm devaluing who, what I think about you and all the efforts and the work that you do. That's what I hear. Not, Hey, can we just, you know, for a little bit of time, we put this in here to make this work because I'm trying to get this all done. And I don't <laughs> hear that. I hear what you're doing has no value. And I freak out and I shut down and then I just go, okay, the light goes off and that's it. And so I have to work through, okay, I didn't just hear that. I know he's doing a really good job. Thank you for handling the finances. So thank you for doing all that you do. But is, does it really matter at the end of the day? Yeah. That's why I don't walk away from that. Yeah. So, and that's, that's a good point. I just made me think of something. I just finished this book last night. Um, it was a recommendation from Steve Harvey. Um, it's called love Steve Harvey. Think how to think big or something like that. Mm -hmm. It's basically about how you think about stuff. And the last part of the book was talking about something very similar to that. It was about dealing with employees, whether or not you're a manager or you're a business owner, you're an employee. He was, he was talking about the people who are really successful leaders or really successful managers on how they deal 
with people is exactly that way. Like when somebody's doing something wrong and you want to craft it, it's like, hey, Joe, come in here. You know what? You just screwed that up the other day. This thing, you, this is how you need to do this in the future. He's saying the way that you handle that thing is you, is you bring them in privately, handle it privately. Hey, Joe, you know what? You're doing an excellent job around here. It's like, I really appreciate your dedication. You've been with us for 20 years. It's like, I wish everybody had the same dedication that you have. You know, that job that we finished up last week. Thank you so much. You really did a great job. There was a thing that I noticed on something that we just did last week though, that this one particular thing, I thought if we, if we handled it that way, you know, it would come out better as for, for the client and just make our company look better and make our whole team look better. Even make, you know, you and I as, cause we work together every day make you and I look better to this other manager that's above us. And so I was just thinking, what do you think about that? Oh yeah, I think that'd be a great, great idea if we change that as well too. Okay. Let's do that moving forward. Okay, cool. All right. Thanks Joe. Have a good day. You know, see the difference in how that's presented Honey versus it's, vinegar. Right. So yeah, it's, it's about, you know, like you said, talking about the things that are working and not just harping on that one thing. And sometimes when you know, you're dealing with somebody that you're working with every single day and in a relationship, whether you're with that person every single day, it's easy to say, why did you do that? <laughs> you know, it's just like, let's just cut to the chase. Let's get to what I want to talk about. You're going to have opportunities to deal with people every single day. Every day, it's gonna be us or a client or a child or someone that we run into. We've got a conference call today, you know, it's all about how we operate in love with honey. Always do the loving thing. Amen. Amen. And the same thing with your kids, you know, <laughs> I mean, seriously, you know, we, we have to take what we learn through our relationships and in business and with our marriages and other relationships to how we're going to actually handle our kid. Cause the ways that we handle our kids are so important. It's the same thing. It's like, you know, you dumb little fart. You, you know, it's like, what'd you do that for? Right. You know, it's like, Hey, how, like, how many times do you well, hear that? What'd you do that for? You know, what'd you do that for? So we've got to, like, we've got to well, think about know. that. There's same no thing. answer. You know, part of what we're on this season in, our teaching is about how to teach kids early because right. the Bible says in Proverbs to train a kid early in the way that they shall go when they're old, they will not depart from it. So it says early. I like how it says early. It doesn't say start them at one, start them at two, start them at 10, whatever, because if it is, it's legalistic. So if it says train a kid at one year old in his finance, the way that he shall go when he was, when he's old, he won't forget about it. So if his kid's 10 and you read that, you said, I was supposed to do this at once. Like I already missed the boat. <laughs> you know, my I kid, I forget about my it. My kid going to be dumb. It's just, it's all over. I told you you're I, a dummy. <laughs> I, I, I love how the Bible is trained early because then you can plug it in wherever. And I think train a kid early from my perspective, I read that is reading the books and why they're in the room, reading the Bible in, to, the, womb, in yeah. the womb, while, while your wife's pregnant, reading that, reading the books that we have on Money Mike and the gang, reading those to them and starting as early as possible. I mean, we have friends who are reading to these, reading our Money Mike and the gang books to the babies that are just like a week old. <laughs> you know? yeah. And one of our good friends is a financial advisor is like having revelations of finances, reading the book. I love it. I love it. <laughs> so, use some tools. Walk in love, talk in love, yeah. keep your mind straight. Yeah. Don't play the wrong movies, play, play the right movies. Play the right movies. Trust God and just keep on keeping on. Get the right word in you. Step, Get some. Step by step. Money Mike and the gang, good word in you. And it's not you, it's me. <laughs> what's yours is mine or what's mine is mine. There we go. That's <laughs> yeah, on that note, Until that's a next good, time. good place to uh, say goodbye. The abundant life. Peace.